Hey there, Bushi here. This is going to be a quick one. I'm a big fan of home automations. Here at home, I have Home Assistant running and I added loads and loads of lights, switches, sensors, you name it. In every single room, there are multiple things that are going into this uh, one Home Assistant entity, for like, for example, the switch. But there's one thing about Home Assistant that was always a bit nagging me and that was not nice. And that is how automations are organized. It is one huge list, one dimensional, and that's it. There's no hierarchy, you cannot group things, you cannot you know, bundle it together and make it nicer. It is one big list, only organized, I think, by uh, and sorted by the names. And if you have a switch like this one, which has five buttons integrated into it, uh, you know, uh, switch on and off, brightness increase, decrease, left and right for whatever, um, color, temperature, for example, essentially you had five automations then in this list, like here in this example. Okay, so this is my demo version of Home Assistant. There's only one light in, in there and the switch. And if you go to settings and automations, you see that I have those three automations here. Essentially for light decrease, light increase and toggle the light. So and if I go in there, you see that whenever it's this remote control is turned on, then the light is toggled. So for example, if I click here, you can see it's turned on and off again. And that's okay, but if I now want also to be able to increase and decrease the brightness, then I need to add another one that has its own trigger and then is increasing the brightness step by step. And the same for decrease. But there is actually something that can be done about it. And that is called trigger IDs. And it was added in 2021 in July. <laughs> and ever since I missed it. And the reason why I missed it, and maybe also you missed it, and then this video is perfect for you because you will love this, is let's add a new automation, is because it's not visible uh, by default. So I'm adding now the remote. And when I turn on, I want to do something but there's no trigger ID here and you can enable it by clicking edit ID and then a new field emerges giving you the option to add a trigger ID and that is not just a number which I used in the beginning that can be anything you can also for example uh, call it turn on for the button and then you can add an action device uh, my big uh, ceiling light and I can call it toggle in this in this case, for example. Um, ah, okay, and that's not correct. Uh, I need to add a um, <laughs> I hear this. If then, oh holy stokes! Uh, it was in German earlier, so uh, that is it's completely different than sorted. I have the feeling. So if then, and then here you can add. A condition and then suddenly you see triggered by and with ID and then you can have a list here and then you have a list here of trigger IDs in this case there's only a single one turn on and we add an action for this device and we switch on well, actually we toggle where's toggle toggle here is toggle uh, and let me get rid this one and then we have the same but now we are set to add more of those so we can duplicate this one and then we can give it under a different name and we say uh, increase when we dim up and then we can again duplicate and call this decrease when we dim, not dim up, but dim down. And now we can add another if then and trigger by a different event or a trigger ID. You can even have more of them, which is also cool. So you can have multiple triggers coming in and then you can assign uh, one or multiple of the events that then follow upon this. This is just great because I can now to I, I can now uh, use this one 
to increase exactly to have a single automation where everything is confined decrease and we decrease and we have it and we call it she's light all in one I cannot type today that is fine and now we go outside and we have to deactivate those quickly and now we should be able to switch on and switch off and increase the decrease okay it's not working yet what's happening um, yeah and I, of course I disabled <laughs> the wrong one we should use the correct automation and now I am able to never that's a pity <laughs> what's happening is that the wrong is that the wrong control or what's happening turn on <laughs> That's funny. Kinda. Ah, it's a, okay, yeah. Mm. It's a pity when you use the wrong... The wrong entity then of course it doesn't work now it should work yes up so um, on and off and then I can increase the strength or it's that's the highest one and then I can decrease again the switch is not really reliable but that is not a problem of home assistant need to replace it maybe the battery is dying I don't know. okay but that is working as it should and that is just so awesome that will now I have to reorganize all my automations of course but that is giving so much better structure and so much better overview you have everything confined in one single place and if uh, for example an entity changes you can go to YAML um, YAML view let's do that quickly like this and then Exchanging uh, an entity here is really simple. It's copy paste in all locations and you're done. That's just awesome. I, and I have no idea how I missed it. So please tell me, have you missed it as well? Is that helping you? Let me know. Uh, yeah, and if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and keep uh, posted for the next video. Also about Home Assistant, I'm working on my LED light that I teased a couple of times. So. Stay tuned uh, and over and out. I'm Bushy. Have a good one. Bye.